Are you having trouble getting started in high rank? Don't know what to do, which monsters to fight, how to get that elusive weapon and armor spheres? Hi guys, it's Guggen, and today I'll show you how to get going in high rank, which monsters to fight, which gear to start with, and eventually, how to get into fighting deviants and elder dragons as quickly as possible. Just a note, this video is related to post story content. As such, despite not having any story details, it may contain spoiler elements such as character names and location. Also note, I'm playing on PC, so any PC specific content may not be available on the Switch and vice versa. I do not believe there are any at the moment, but I could be wrong. Out of the way, let's crack on. All right, so let's set the scene. You've just watched the final cutscene, skip the credits, now you're told about that your adventure is continuing. This sounds great on paper. However, the game is very bad about giving you more than the most basic sparse information about what exactly that means. A small mention of stronger monsters wandering around, and in his own is really all you get. First off, you'll notice you don't have a buddy anymore. You can choose any of the buddies that previously assisted you in the game. If you want my personal recommendation, snag Roberto. You can find him in Lelucian near the prayer pot. I prefer him due to him being very durable and hitting very hard. Of note though, he is a hunter, which unfortunately means he doesn't get as many dual kinship attacks. However, he hits hard enough 90% of cases that this drawback is mineral. His charged attacks can hit as hard or harder than most kinship attacks. So you don't really miss the dual kinship attacks. Now that you have your buddy picked, our first stop is the last Cadavan stand from the story. From there, you can make your way to the new area. The Elder from Ahana will meet you there and let you in. This is going to be an important area later. However, for the moment, we're just coming here to unlock it for expeditions, which are going to be the first thing you want to start up since they take a fair bit of time to complete. Once you've unlocked the new area and activated the Cadavan stand there, head back to town and set up your expeditions. To save time, I'll assume for the moment that you understand the basic mechanics of expeditions. If not, I'll put some links to some useful guides by other creators to get you up to speed. Now, the reason to start expeditions before fighting any monsters is that they can give you all kinds of useful items. Generally, what you're going to be after are finding charms, which give you plus 20% to rare gene in your eggs, ancient coins, which you can sell for cash and a lot of it, and nutriments, which you can use to upgrade your health, defense, and power for yourself and your monsties. But most importantly for our purposes, armor and weapon spheres. These spheres are required in order to craft any high rank armor or weapon from Velocidrone all the way up to Nergigante and beyond. They all use them and you need 10 points worth of the respective spheres for each original craft along with the normal 12 points of monster materials. And to make matters worse, while you can get said spheres from bone and ore nodes in high rank and even some low rank content, you're not going to find very many. Using the expeditions and starting them early will allow you to start crafting gear much earlier than if you just hunt for spheres on the map. I'd recommend sending two expeditions to the Forbidden Grounds, two to high rank Alcala, one each to high rank versions of Loloska and Hokolo, and set all of them to treasure hunt. This will net you a good starting point of useful items, including the aforementioned spheres. These expeditions are on 50 to 70 minute timers, which is why I recommend starting them before you do anything else. Now that your expeditions are on the way, you're going to need monster mats, and if you've attempted to fight any high rank monsters up to this point, you've probably realized the gear you ended the story with just isn't going to cut it. To get you started, we're going to the aforementioned new zone and ending the quest monsters here. We're just going to farm the Velocidrome and two Velocipray. They're the very first monsters you're going to see in that area. You'll have to travel to the Catavan stand after each fight and you may lose a heart or two depending on your gear and how much bad luck you have. But even if you have to play defensively, Reverta should be making short work of the enemies, so you should be fine. You're going to want enough Velocidrome materials to add up to at least 24 points worth of material. This will let you craft a weapon and the armor set. If you want to craft multiple weapons, farm accordingly, but I don't know if I'd recommend this as you're soon going to be moving up the ranks fast enough that you'll be replacing gear rather than trying to upgrade it. With a little luck, by the time you're done farming the Velocidrome, your expedition should be back, and with a little more luck, you'll have enough spheres to craft the Velocidrome armor and weapon. At this point, you should be able to fight most low tier large monsters such as Kuliaku or Puke Puke. If you want, you can even give the Durambros a shot. If you win, his armor and weapons are noticeably stronger than the Velocidrome gear you had before. Unfortunately, the Durambros in this area does not respawn, and you're likely to only get enough materials for a single piece of gear. If you have to choose between weapon or armor, I'd pick the armor. This will give you the survivability to start running high rank dens. High rank dens are not really going to be for farming equipment. But, just for fighting monsters you feel are up to fighting until you reach level 40 to 45. Use the materials you pick up to craft any weapon of your preferred type. Doesn't really matter what the element is, you're just aiming for around 140 to 150 damage give or take. Once you've met these milestones, you can start hunting Tigrix level monsters successfully. Tigrix for weapons and anything you want in that range for armor. I personally use Tigrix bow and greatsword for pierce and slice respectively. And for blunt, I used the Magia Shambel hunting horn for offense if I was fighting something I was confident of winning, and the Glass Queen hunting horn for those fights I wasn't so sure of. And we're finally here. At this point, you're geared to fight pretty much anything not a deviant or elder dragon, and you should be able to kill 
kill about 50% of those. Though you may want to be level 50 or higher before they're easy enough to kill the farm for their gear. Also by this point, if you've been restarting your expeditions regularly, then you should have a nice stock of weapon and armor spheres to start making element specific sets to make those fights even easier. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any further hints or tips, please leave them in the comments below. I hope this was useful and informative, and if it was, please like and subscribe for more just like this. As always, good luck and have fun. Guggen, out.